Good morning, students. In our previous lectures, we have discussed about Article Thirteen in order to understand the ambit of law. In our other lectures, we have discussed about law and dharma, as to what is the similarity between law and dharma and the similarities between the two concepts. We have also discussed about the functions of law in a given legal system. In this lecture, we shall focus on definition of law as understood under different schools of jurisprudence when we talk about the term jurisprudence we need to understand what it reflects and why the study of jurisprudence is important jurisprudence is a study and knowledge of the law that explains its creation enforcement and purpose to say jurisprudence helps the reader to contemplate the law to understand and interpret the origination of the of the concept of law and what are the theories behind the evolution of law the study of jurisprudence is important because when we talk about law it is that concept which is considered to be stable but when we talk about human generation it is that aspect that has kept on changing and that has evolved with the time this evolution of human race has reflected various changes that have been introduced in the concept of law in order to understand law one need to understand what has been the reason behind the implementation of laws under different legal system in different times the subject of jurisprudence helps the reader to understand the philosophy that lies behind the law that is what has been the notion behind the implementation of law in a given legal system when we talk about the term jurisprudence it is a word which has been derived from the latin term juris prudential that means knowledge of law in order to understand the concept of jurisprudence and the theories under that has been discussed under jurisprudence it is important to understand that it has been categorized in two heads one is analytical jurisprudence that talks about as to what is the law and second is the normative jurisprudence that discusses the purposes of law these two categories of jurisprudence will help the learner to understand as to why law has been enacted what is been the purpose behind the implementation of law and what role has been played by law in a given different uh, scenario and under different legal systems to understand the concept of law it is important to understand the different schools of jurisprudence that have been talked about under the subject of jurisprudence there are mainly five schools of jurisprudence one is philosophical school or what we call as natural school of natural law school of jurisprudence second is analytical school of jurisprudence or positivist school of jurisprudence historical school of jurisprudence sociological school of jurisprudence and realist school of jurisprudence each school talks about the development of law or the understanding of law in different point of view as a student of law and as a student of legal method one need to understand that what is the concept that has been laid down under different schools of jurisprudence thus for the purpose of our lectures we will be discussing different scholars from different schools and the positive school of jurisprudence or analytical school of jurisprudence the focus shall remain on the concept as given by austin and hle hart and the sociological school of jurisprudence the discussion shall be done on the of the concept as given by roscoe pound historical school von savigny and ll fuller for the natural school of jurisprudence coming to our first school that is philosophical school or natural law school the eminent scholars of the schools are grossius immanuel kant and hegel however for the purpose of our lecture we shall focus on the concept given by ll fuller who was an american legal philosopher and criticized the legal pot positivism and defended a secular and procedural form of natural law theory he propagated concept of mor morality as a basis for creating law and has discussed the relationship between law and morality under his book morality of law in 1964 according to fuller when we talk about concept of law he has defined law as the enterprise of subjecting human conduct to the governance of rules 
meaning thereby that it is the conduct of human human beings that are subjected to the rules as laid down by the state and is that enterprise that puts such restrictions or subject the human conduct as per the rules of the government the focus of ll fuller has remained on the concept of morality according to him he believes that the conduct of an individual is governed by the concept of morality talking about the concept of morality ll fuller further clarified that it is not only the formal criteria that should be taken into consideration but what uh, more, what is more required is the basic minimum moral criteria as well in order to conduct and define the code of conduct for human beings for ll fuller there are two filters that are required in order to understand the rules that governs the law first is the formal criteria that talks about the authorities who are laying down the laws and second is the moral criteria that defines the content of law to say ll fuller has given two tests in order to understand and the concept of law first is who made the law that is the test of identifying the makers of the law and secondly to identify the reason behind making the law whether the reason has been good or bad is what reflects the concept of morality he has further explained the concept of morality and while discussing the concept of morality he has divided the con the uh, concept in two types first is the external morality and second is the internal morality when he was talking about the concept of external morality he focused on the concept of morality as the morality of aspiration to say it is the conduct that are subjected to control and not aspiration which are the subject of control as it is difficult to identify the aspiration of the state whether the aspiration is good or bad is a question that depends on various factors what external morality reflects is that the code of conduct is what should be taken into consideration and not the purpose that should be taken into consideration while explaining the concept of external morality he further emphasized upon the concept of meaningful conduct that human beings can have with each other and with the help of these meaningful conduct one can improve and enrich themselves it is this conduct that is subjected to control and not the aspiration in order to maintain the peace and order in the society second factor second type of morality that fuller has talked has discussed is the internal morality where the focus has been on the achievement of aspiration that can be done by make, making laws for which there must be eight qualities first is generality promulgation prospectivity intelligibility unself contradictory possibility of obedience consistency through times concurrence between uh, uh, official actions and declared rules by generality it means that it should be general in nature it should be applicable to everyone at the same time and in the, at the same place promulgation means that there should be proper declaration of the rules by the authority by the authorities prospectivity means that they should be applicable for all time to come they should have some prospective effect even for the future acts with intelligibility fuller means that the law should be common to every people and it should be understandable by every person living in the society to say it must be comprehensive in nature seventh point that fuller talks about is consistency through time whereby whereby he means that the law should be stable for all time to come the eighth where he focuses upon the concurrence between official actions and declared rule by which he means that the officials of the states a state must also follow their own rules hence when we talk about the concept of law as given by fuller we need to understand that according to fuller external morality is required for durability of law whereas inner morality is required for identification of law thus both these elements inner morality and external morality are required to understand the existence of law in a given legal system hence for fuller the concept of law is what is related to the concept of morality and the basis of implementation of law must be morality hence we can conclude this lecture by saying that for fuller morality of duty 
which has been specified as external morality and morality of aspiration which has been described as internal morality are important factors for governance of the society it is the morality of duty that consists of basic rules without which an ordered society is impossible or without which an orderly society directed towards certain goals must fail of its mark according to fuller as one moves away from the conditions obviously essential to a social life a point is reached where the pressure of duty leaves off and the challenge of ex excellence begins it is precisely at this point that one reaches the level of a morality of aspiration that means the morality of good life of excellence of the fullest realization of human power thus talking about morality morality is a term that may refer to that what is desired or that which is desirable to a practical socio cultural fact in respect to matters of right and wrong good or evil it is that theory about the that talks about the ends standards principles according to which the actual state of state, actual state of affairs are to be governed surveyed and judged to say it necessarily refers to human values preferences and many other aspects that reflects the existence of law that justifies the existence of law thus according to fuller it is the morality that should forms the basis of implementation of law and in order to understand law one need to understand the basics of morality with this we conclude our session for school of jurisprudence under natural school of jurisprudence as given by fuller for any queries for any questions kindly put on your comments in the next lecture thank you so much have a nice day